Uh, 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 it's not just any pilot, it's... The Amazing Digital Circus! <sighs> what can I do to get you excited? It has a cute Chester girl in it! <laughs> Simp. Wowie zowie! Did y'all see that amazing digital circus pilot yet? On first impression seeing the announcement teaser, I was interested. But upon seeing the official trailer, I was damn well hooked. It looked to be something completely new, and I was just excited for new indie animated shows. Especially since they're kind of on the rise right now on YouTube. I think that's largely due to the recent state of animation. Being treated more like a kid's toy that's easily disposable, rather than a medium that can really be compelling. It's always been an argument, but man, that Oscar ceremony really didn't help at all. The modern movie industry really be out here saying, You are a toy! You are a child's plaything! So yeah, because of that whole debacle, people have been leaning more towards independent works here on YouTube, and it's created a surge of interest in indie animation in general. Glitch Productions already had a pretty big show called Murder Drones, my quick thoughts are that it's pretty good, but it takes like two episodes to really hook you because the first two episodes are okay and, dare I say, kind of cringy. But the recent episodes are damn good, and the animation on them is definitely improving. They no longer look like moving ragdolls in Gmod! Hell yeah, dude! So with one good show under their belt, they decided to do it, but again. I mean, hey, it sure as hell worked. Jesus, man, 182 million views? I can only dream of getting anywhere near a million. So no matter what my opinion is or random Twitter user number 48's is, this show was a success and kind of took the internet by storm when it first hit YouTube. It was everywhere. You couldn't avoid it even if you tried. I watched it day one when it first came out and I was going to make a video about it sooner, but it kind of got shoved to the side for the release of the Five Nights at Freddy's movie and I needed to make a video about that before anything else. So this video was delayed heavily, especially since that video was pushed back as well. But I guess in a way, now that a lot of the initial hype has largely died down now, I think it's time to take an objective look at how this pilot fares, instead of just being overly negative because it's popular or overly positive. Well with that out of the way, let's just jump into it. So what's the amazing digital circus about I hear you ask? Well, this dashing gentleman here named Kane, is a rogue AI that has trapped six troubled human souls in the aforementioned Amazing Digital Circus, which is a virtual reality game run by Kane and his assistant Bubble. Our main protagonist, given the name Pomni, finds herself in this new and wacky world after putting on a headset, meeting all these new people who are in the same predicament as she is. Pomni has to learn to keep her sanity while trapped in this new realm and try to discover some type of path to the real world. Very interesting concept for a show. I'm pretty sure this is an idea that's been done before, but this feels unique enough to make it stand out and differentiate itself from anything I've ever seen before. I'm not going to explain the entire plot of the actual pilot because you should just go watch it for yourself, but I will be getting into spoiler territory here, so you've been warned. Starting the actual review, let me just get the biggest thing out of the way first. Damn, the animation is good! It's easily, without question, some of the best animation I've ever seen on YouTube. I would explain more, but just look at it for yourself. All the characters show so much expression and character through their exaggerated moments. I, I, I love it. It just feels like they took their time and effort to make some smooth, fluid animation. And I thought it looked good in all the teasers and trailers, but in the actual episode, it looked way better than initial thought. The team did an outstanding job, far exceeding the expectations for what indie animation can look like. Character design is also one of the series creator Gooseworks' specialties, and it shines here in my opinion. On their own, they're pretty good. All the designs are pretty creative and definitely fit into that zany, surreal feel that the rest of the circus fits into. But combine that with the amazing animation, and that instantly makes all the characters just that more expressive and charming. From the facial features to the fast or slow movements. Every character could be mute, and you could still tell what each character was thinking just by reading their faces or movements. The environment around them oozes with creativity as well. 
all the colors of the circus pop, and even settings such as the grounds pop just as much. I think that comes down to the lack of stuff like detailed shading and gradients on a lot of the models. Because again, this is supposed to be taking place inside an old computer game. I don't think games from that era were exactly high resolution running at 60 frames per second. Even the actually high detailed areas such as the fake exit area Pomni gets stuck in near the end, which doesn't pop as much, but that's the point. It's supposed to be a much more sinister and insane tone, which stuff like the lighting helps a lot. The circus looks like one of those old I Spy books. Do any of you remember those? That's what I first thought when I watched the pilot. And it turns out, I was right. Because I'm a professional, baby. Though this does come at a cost when you realize at some points you're playing I Spy with the characters as they can easily blend into the background all the bright colors. But this is only really a problem in the main circus area. The next best part about the show, besides the satisfying animation, is easily the characters. Let me just start off with the two main characters that I have a lot more to say about. Let's start with Kane. He is the AI that runs the Amazing Digital Circus. He's essentially the ringleader and is responsible for keeping all these people here trapped. We think. As you would probably assume since there's only a pilot out right now for the series, we don't exactly know a lot about the lore. So I can't actually say whether Kane's doing all this against his will or not. We'll just kind of have to wait and see. But for now, he's just the ringmaster who makes challenges slash adventures for all of the cast to go on, to prevent them from going insane. He's also my favorite character. You know that meme where you look at a character like Ken or Patrick Bayman and you say, that's literally me? Well, personally, I can't disclose whether I'm an AI character that's in possession of six human souls, but I love his energy. The fast paced movements and speaking, expressions, all that jazz is great. One of the few characters to make me consistently laugh. Besides Kane, who was the antagonist slash villain slash AI thing, Pomni is the actual protagonist of the show, and a great one at that. She's both levels of endearing and fun, especially when she's slowly going insane and trying desperately to reach an unattainable goal, and by the end of the episode accepting the fact that she'll never leave and be forced to stay in the circus for all of eternity. How fun! Not as much to say as I thought. She's just an interesting character that fits the tone of the show. And I can't wait to see more of her when the show gets picked up for a full season. The rest of the characters are also pretty charming. Again, it's just a pilot, so not a whole lot to discuss, and we could sum up the characters in a sentence. But from what we've seen of them so far, uh, I like. Kinger is based and also insane. God, I hate Jax! I don't get it. Why does everyone like this stupid, rude, asshole Bugs Bunny wannabe who's the love child of Bonnie the Bunny and Yakko frickin' Warner? He bullies everything and everyone, throws literal bowling balls at people, leaves centipedes in Ragatha's room because he knows she hates them. Look at his smug ass smirk. I just want to smack his face, clean off his melon shaped head. And he's not hot, like the rest of the internet wants you to think. Like look at him, I don't want to screw around with that thing. Don't even think these characters have genitals, so how would that work? I don't know. Am I supposed to like this man? Because I don't. Not one bit. Sorry, just had to, had to get that off my chest. Um, yeah, that's it for the characters. Pretty good for now, but definitely has a lot of potential to be explored in the full series. I also want to see this show get more twisted and a lot more comedic. Don't get me wrong, the show is weird and has many themes of insanity going on, but I don't think it's really pushed a lot. Nothing here is genuinely disturbing or got me to feel nervous in any way. At most, I was like, whoa, that's something you don't see every day. Although I will say, the abstraction concept is cool and quite creepy when you think about it. In The Amazing Digital Circus, a person will abstract when they've completely gone insane or, as Ragatha puts it, reaching your breaking point. What happens is this, you, you become this thing. Just a violent force of nature that tries to corrupt everything around it and destroy the stability of the circus. Then the way the abstracted Kofmo is dealt with at the end of the episode is Kane trapping it within a dark void he calls the cellar. Which is where we see a lot more abstracted people are just trapped. Now that's disturbing. Good job there. And in terms of the humor, I mean, it's there, but nothing too special. A lot of the humor comes from character interactions, mostly with Kane and Jax. 
Sometimes I even feel the wackiness of the jokes fall into that le random kind of humor, which I guess you can make the argument that it fits with the show's nature, but it's just something I don't personally find funny. Unless it comes out of absolutely nowhere, which sometimes happens in the pilot and it makes me laugh. Which is probably why I find memes like Rick Roll, Indie Home Packet Phoenix, and that god dang Josh Hutcherson whistle at it so funny. Thank God. I don't think he'll show up this time. Well, God damn it! So yeah, while not done badly at all, the humor and dark side of things should be pushed a lot more when this pilot gets adapted to a full-fledged series. A few more things I want to say before I wrap up this quick review. I think the B-plot was fun and something for the side characters to do, and for he who shall not be named to be witty. While Pomni went through her existential crisis separately, which was definitely the right move there. The way it all concludes is super underwhelming. This is quite literally how it goes. Jax, Gangle, and Kinger are trying to figure out how to get Zubul out of the glowing queen's stomach, while Jax does nothing but banter with the queen. Th then all of a sudden the abstracted Kofmo breaks through the roof and starts beating up the glowing queen like a teenager in a school fight. And the way they escape the lair is to just take the escalator. Well, I guess that's the end of that. All the voice actors do a great job while acting. Ah! Main shoutouts go to Lizzie Freeman as Pomni, Michael Kovac as Jax, and... Oh god, I'm gonna say this wrong. Alex... Roy... Roy... Royshin. Royken? Royshin? Alex is king. Y'all did a good job. I'm also gonna shout out Kevin Temmer, who was the lead animator for the show. I watch his YouTube channel and he's a great animator. Way more talented than I'll ever be, honestly. So, again, good job! Uh, the OST is a banger, and yeah, that's really it. The Amazing Digital Circus is definitely worthy of your support. and has a bright future ahead when it gets picked up for a full season. And looking at the view count right now, it's definitely gonna be big. Y'all have a great new year because I'm gonna try to get this done in a week. But who knows if that's likely. And here's to 2024. Yes, I'm working on the ranking every movie from 2023 video, so stay tuned for that. Have a great day, and I'll catch you on the flip side.